Hi everyone, I'm Steffi D. And I'm Lisa H. And welcome to Check In From Away. This week we are going back to school and checking in with some of our favorite onstage teachers. Thanks for joining us. So Lisa, it looks like everybody's going back to school. I know, it's going to be a little different this year than in the past, but what better way to kind of like get people inspired to be in the classroom than to chat with some of our favorite onstage teachers. Absolutely. So Lisa, like be honest with me. What kind of student were you growing up? Okay, well, all you need to know is this. Oh my God, I just saw, Lisa, that's just you in your purest form. This is my first day of grade nine. Lisa, let me tell you, in school, we're talking. I was a straight A student. I was an overachiever. I always got a plus on everything. I graduated with like a 95% average from high school. I was the best student ever. Like I, I did everything right, I think, sort of. So a lot has changed. <laughs> I was just thinking that, I was like, so what <laughs> happened? <laughs> Literally though, what happened? Like, I don't know. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Kate Hennig and I am here because I played Mrs. Wilkinson in Billy Elliot for the Mervishes, oh my god, nine years ago. <laughs> hi, I'm Paula Brancati and I played Miss Honey in Matilda the Musical. I don't know if I've ever told you this, but I'm a huge Degrassi fan, like huge Degrassi fan. I didn't actually know you were a huge Degrassi fan though. Yeah, no I am and <laughs> I've seen every single episode of the show. Hi everybody, my name is Lisa Horner, and I'm very happy to be here. I played Beulah in Come From Away. Lisa, so important that we talk about, you are back at school right now. I am. Can you tell us about that? What are you studying? How's it going? What's up? I went back to school to be a personal support worker, a PSW. So those are the folks that work in um, the facilities that you can work anywhere, actually. It's an amazing, the PSWs are amazing. In the first toilet scene, Billy is in a, a, a toilet cubicle, and at one point the door flies open. And on the inside of the wooden toilet cubicle door is carved, Mrs. Wilkinson is a right cow. And that's that is the absolute description of this woman. She was a right cow. And um, she was mean and nasty and... Uh, uh, you know, she didn't want to be there. She, uh, uh, it, it feels to me like she had had huge disappointment in her life in so many ways. And then this kid stumbles into her class and opens up her heart. I think Miss Honey's such a pure, you know, um, gentle soul. Um, like kindness oozes out of her pores and teaching is her passion. She's had such a rough upbringing. She had such a difficult life and lost her dad very young. So for her, like the classroom is her, is where she really vibrates. It's where she really feels joy. And then, you know, she is able to access um, a real connection with Matilda because she sees something so special in her that, you know, I think wasn't recognized in herself by any adults around her growing up so um they have like their bond is so huge obviously um or for people who haven't seen the show it is such a special connection what i love about every teacher that i've met associated with it and of course beulah cooper um who i've had the chance to get to know and diane is the pragmatism right like it's just they're they newfoundlanders do pragmatism combined with empathy better than any people i've ever met in my entire life it's just, you know, this is what we do. And it's filled with kindness and hilarious expressions and stories. Between the run that I did on Broadway before I came to the Mervishes, I went through 15 boys, 15 billies. Okay. And the relationship with each one of those young men was incredibly uh, special. And I'm so, so grateful for those days.
my first day in New York and I'm meeting the, the first boy who is going to play Billy with me. And his name is Alex Coe. And he is 13 years old. And he is, his eyes are like this. Like all the time. He just keeps on looking at me like, what am I doing here? How did I get to Broadway? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so just going through the, just going through this process with each of these young men was, uh, each one was uh, a really unique and wonderful experience. There are so many, like it was my first long run of a show ever. So it was like a dream in so many ways. And I joined the tour initially. So there was a lot of like playing catch up and just, not wanting to mess it up, honestly. Um, but my favorite um, memories probably involve my dear friend, Dan Shamroy, who is like family and um, who I just love to bits. He's truly never, like no one, no co-star has ever made me laugh that hard or friend. Like we really, like he would try, you know, I would break, like he would have me break on stage. That's a classic sham move. Walking out to the drumbeat, I could cry thinking about that. It makes me so happy. Um, it, I miss that so much. Um, <laughs> uh, well, you know, my memories that make me laugh always involve me screwing up. <laughs> you know what the moment yeah. you said that? I remember the time. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> Are you going to talk about the time that I had to tell the band to keep going because the show was never going to start. So it was in the very opening sequence. Yeah. And uh, I, I went out to say probably my sixth line ever written. And um, I couldn't remember that. That it was like, I'd never said those words before in my life. And I stood there and I felt the, into I felt all you guys just like, and everybody's very nice because you're always very supportive. You don't know if it's upsetting to me. And then it became very clear that I'm just an idiot. And it was like going to work itself out. But then I had to walk back. because like, we got to keep going. And I just went like this, like go, like to the band. I was like, just go. <laughs> and then I heard everybody losing it. I was always a total overachiever. I've always been a total overachiever. So right from even before school, uh, I yeah I was uh, getting my mom to teach me words because I wanted to sing in the choir, but I couldn't read yet. So I I got my mom to teach me the words to the songs because I couldn't read, but I wanted to sing. I know, right? Like at I'm four or five five years old, I think. My older brother and sister were singing in the choir, so I wanted to sing in the choir too. So anyway, but that's just to say uh, overachieving <laughs> would, would be, you know, sort of a catchphrase for me. I was very studious. I stressed out a lot. I, you know, loved a group project, especially if it was creating a volcano, you know, um, that grade four project was a classic or any sort of like beat poetry um, kind of thing really struck a chord with me. Uh, I was the kind of student that like found reasons to not go to track and field day and, um, you know, loved recess, but didn't love the cold. So I would hide inside a lot and came up with a bunch of clubs. In fact, started the rosary club at my school just so I could stay inside and join the stamp club, join the chess club. I just got involved in everything just to kind of, I mean, I'm not, the most outdoorsy is what I, it's not a student thing, but I'm just revealing, you know, that part of my elementary school history. Okay, but, I need to, to stop you there for a second. When you say rosary <laughs> club, you mean like the rosary, you know, uh, the prayers, like that's the what one. Well, and I also, I, I, it was myself and, and one of my oldest friends, Suzanne, we were in grade one. And I remember us actually, I don't know if we pitched this, but we would like build the rosaries during first and second recess and then like say them on third recess. So winter was really covered, you know? So you, well, I always refer back to an old um, uh, card, uh, the, your report card at the end of the year. And my big comment was always, Lisa likes to talk to her neighbors. So that was, that was pretty, uh, pretty indicative of my behavior. My father was very supportive, but he always used to say, as long as you pass. There you go. I, was a, I was a sociable kid. 
Um, so I think school served a lot of purposes for me. Uh, education may or may not been the number one priority for me, but I loved going to school. I did really like it. From grade four to grade eight, I was in a, what they called a gifted class, you know? So it was additional schooling because uh, uh, we could achieve our regular um, uh, curriculum quite quickly. So um, I remember that he gave me this lesson. I was looking to write something even then. This was in grade seven, I think. And this was in Edmonton. And he gave me this exercise to go and listen to a piece of Ravel and to go and watch uh, a fraud trial. I was like 12. <laughs> and I would go to the Edmonton Municipal Court and watch this fraud trial. And then I would go to the Edmonton Public Library and listen to Ravel. And I was to write something that brought the two of those things together. Isn't that a brilliant teacher? Like that is an, I think that's an incredible teacher. Someone who has the imagination to stimulate a young mind in such an enormous way. And I, as an adult, when I have had writer's block, I go back to that lesson and I sit down and I put on Ravel and I write. I'm still like quite close to some of my teachers. Um, I'd say, you know, one that's an absolute dear friend is Michelle Jansen. It's still so weird to call her Michelle because to me, she's Mrs. Jansen. But um, she, we, I was part of the regional arts program at St. Elizabeth um, High School in Thornhill. And we were part of the originating vocal program. So I saw her every day for four years. She totally just shaped my, my voice, but also like my musical sensibility and has such a kind heart and made it really possible for me actually to leave a lot in film and was so she was just so supportive of all of that and uh when she came to see matilda i was so like butterflies of my stomach excited and nervous my gosh well one of my um old drama teachers from high school came to see come from away i've had a few of them come from high school which is amazing um peter kunder is a dear old teacher of mine sherry Prisnowski. Um, uh, they're all retired now. Um, I've had a chance to sort of chit chat with them. And when they come to see the show, when they have, it's mind blowing, you know, because I'm well into adulthood and they know me on such a different level that it's kind of nice. It makes me feel like I'm a student again a little bit, you know, like sometimes there's adults in your life that make you feel small again. I loved biology. Biology was my favorite subject for sure. I loved cutting things up, like little bodies of creatures and looking at them. That was, so for the longest time I was gonna be a surgeon. I was like, yeah. My favorite was English. I loved writing an essay and proving a point, still do. I loved English and I loved history. I loved writing, you know, and you got to write poetry and stuff like that. So I guess in the classic actor form, I'm really, really happy that I got a chance to, to do that type of stuff too. Math, I hate, to this day, anyone puts numbers in front of me and I just go, oh, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Least favorite, you know, like, I was gonna say the classics, but actually I'm sure there's people who love this, of course. For me, it was math, a dreaded math. Would yeah. trade like, Sailor Moon cards for answers. Math was really hard for me. Math was very hard and I, I sort of broke down the concept. Every time I had to learn a new concept, I would forget the old concept. You know, it, I find it ironic now, having learned, you know, of course, uh, we all have hours and hours and hours of script and music and, and it's nothing, you know, but back in the day, I couldn't maintain any of those math formulas and things like that. So I'd say that was probably, unfortunately, my least favorite, just because I was so bad at it. Silence. <laughs> I never got in trouble in school. Are you kidding? No way. I was on the honor roll. I was like, every time a question was asked, I was like, I would, yeah. There you go. I was pretty terrified of getting in trouble. I don't, I mean, I assume all kids are, but I was really scared of it. Um, I mean, I love to talk, clearly, so I would often get shushed, you know, a little of that. Um, I remember on our grade eight, like, leading up to grad trip, we had a big, we had a big trip 
to mm, somewhere up north and we were all staying over and we got lost me or, or like we took a different path myself and my girlfriends and a bunch of the guys and we got back like an hour later than everyone else and i'm quite sure that the punishment was there was a threat that like we might not be able to perform for lip sync if i'm not mistaken and i was like mortified so terrified hoped they wouldn't call my parents and also dying to perform so um we spoiler we did you know but the threat was there and it was i was really i had you know tummy ache i got in trouble for swearing i i i got in trouble twice for swearing too much in elementary school and in theater school right it, if you get in trouble for swearing too much in theater school, you are swearing too much, madam. Um, I was in, I think I was using all sorts of foul language and I got sent to the principal's office. And in classic form, I burst into tears and I was inconsolable, which I'm sure was a hot knee jerk reaction to the fact that you're about to get in trouble because you did something wrong. So I wasn't really prepared to take responsibility for my behavior at that point. Um, so that was my first time and I was terrified. And then I was in theater school and I was embarrassed. Right. It's time for the check-in from away back to school pop quiz. This game is inspired by Colin Mockery's Are You Smarter Than a Canadian Fifth Grader? Are you smarter than a Canadian fifth grader? They were gonna call the show, Are You Smarter Than Colin Mockery? But that would have been a little too easy. What animal? Is Canada's official national symbol? Okay. Well, there's a couple in my head. The loon, the beaver, or the moose? It's one of them? Okay, it is one of them. Okay, I'm really excited about that. I'm gonna say it's the moose. It's the beaver! Oh, you know what? Would have been number three for me, so I was not close. What color do you get when you mix yellow and red. Yellow and red? Yeah. Yellow and, I'm gonna say like a puce orange. What's a puce orange? It's like a mustardy orange. Oh, well, you're right that it's orange. Okay. Listen, we're gonna start off really easy. Don't worry, Kate, okay? All right. Who painted the Mona Lisa? Uh. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Without counting Pluto, how many planets are in our solar system? Is Pluto not one anymore? That's why it's out? No, it's out. Did you not hear? Like Pluto's not included anymore. I had a space club growing up in a UFO club, so oh. longer discussion for another time, but no, I didn't catch up. Sadly, the club didn't know. Um, <laughs> Well then, is there eight or is there another ninth that's come in in Pluto's place? Eight? It's eight. Yeah, you're right. What is the name of the metal liquid inside of a thermometer? Mercury. Okay, two for two. The characters read the same backward as forward. Some examples um, are, for example, civic, radar, level, kayak. What is this term called? I can't even remember. I know. Uh, is it a palindrome? Yes! Oh, see, how did my brain come up with that? After landing on the moon, where did humans go next? Home? <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. They were like, I'm tired. What is the name of the first man to step foot on the moon? Oh, um, Neil Armstrong. Yes! Three for three, Lisa! Which is the fastest mammal in the world? Uh, fastest mammal? I'm gonna say dolphin. Ooh. That's a really interesting answer. It is the cheetah, unfortunately. But dolphin, I, I, they swim pretty fast. True or false? The sun is a star. True. Congrats. Right? 92 cans of food are collected for the school food drive. Okay. Okay? Yep. If they are stacked in pyramids of 10, how many pyramids of canned food can they build? 
Well, I guess nine with two extra cans, right? Hey! What famous Canadian founded the Marathon of Hope? Oh, Terry Fox. Oh my God, I know an answer. Oh, phew. Nine balls were in the basket. More balls were added to the basket. Now there are 16 balls. How many balls were added to the basket? Seven. There you go. I have to be honest, I used my fingers. Tommy Douglas first introduced Medicare when he was premier of which province? I think it was Saskatchewan. Five for five, Lisa Horner. If one dog year is equal to seven human years, how old is Rachel's three-year-old dog, Spot? Three years old. Is it a joke? Wait. <laughs> You're totally right. We never specified how old the dog was in human years. We just told you that one is one, seven is seven. How old is Rachel's three-year-old dog? We never said Three years old. There you go. <laughs> You're right, we screwed it up. Like straight up, we, we screwed it up. You're right, he's three years old. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on this week's episode of Check In From Away. See you soon. Cheers. Cheers. Favorite subject was history, for sure. And Lee's favorite subject was math, 100%. Yeah, like across the board, I'm pretty sure everybody's going to hate math. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. My favorite subject at school was obviously theater. I went to an arts high school, so theater was my favorite. My least favorite, math. Ding, ding, ding. Like everybody just math. Like, nobody likes math. Does anybody like math? No. Really you smart like, people like math. Only smart people like math, so not you and me. So you know what that means about us. <laughs> yep. I'm well aware. I already knew that, though. <laughs>